أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله this the subject today is what is strategic counteroffensive strategic counteroffensive means that um, we want to explain to you basically the public and the community who, who's interested in our serialization project and I say serialization because of We've had many projects going on at the same time uh, for quite some time. And if I had to put a time piece on this period that we're in now, I would say it started 15 years ago uh, at the end of our, uh, uh, our conference that we had in 2002. And that signaled the necessity uh, to move to a much higher level. It signaled the need uh, to implement a higher strategy. In those days, if you look at any of the literature, it will talk about certain things like, well, uh, the grand jury effect. And, talk about not only the grand jury effect, it might talk about the uh, book of uh, coincidence. Uh, and other books. And all those books relate to uh, what we felt was necessary at the time. In fact, if we look at some of the old things, uh, 2010, what was it? This is called Manual of Islamic Movement. Manual of Islamic Movement would be giving the people the idea that we're going to give you a manual, a written manual, of how to carry out Islamic work in America and be successful at it. Uh, how to use strategic management, how to use planning, and how to you how to change your theory of Islamic movement into practice. So the manual of Islamic movement. This is uh, 2010, and so the manual of Islamic movement was being constructed at the same time we're talking about it here, and talking about it, putting it on CD. We have stacks of CDs. Uh, in album form, you know, all well organized. And that was, that is the manual of Islam. <laughs> you see, the grand jury presentation have been the serialization of all of these talks, some before <laughs> on CD and these in the last year or two on DVDs. This is the grand jury. Grand jury is when you present uh, evidence to uh, an audience, which is the grand jury. The uh, person that was seeking an indictment on is not there. They're not represented. It's a tool of the government. It's not Star Chamber, but I don't want to get into legal stuff. People remember what Star Chamber. Star Chamber in Britain. Chamber where they came and they could indict the enemies of the state. This was back about three centuries ago. And the grand jury is similar to Star Chamber, but it's not. If the government wants an indictment against somebody, they call the grand jury. And the grand jury is a, it's a grand jury. It could be several people in number. And they're there to hear the prosecution present evidence 
against whoever it is they're seeking an indictment. Then the grand jury votes on whether they're going to allow the prosecution to indict the person or the organization. Okay. So when we presented the concept of grand jury, people thought, just like they thought everything we was presenting, we would hold a legal uh, uh, a revolutionary council and have a program and we would call that the, the grand jury to indict the United States government. Many revolutionary organizations have some mock-up presentations before their audience and then they indict the United States or the Soviet Union on oppression and being oppressor and on imperialism and what have you. And it could be a one count indictment, a ten count indictment, whatever. Okay. We had to, we're a small group. We know where we are, we, we have a reasonable idea where we are and what we've been doing. And we have a reasonable idea of what the government and other groups and organizations feel about us. And we know what, uh, it's not what our limitations are, but we have to make the best use of, uh, if you were, would remember 2000, January 2008, the laws of war. Laws of War comes out of Chairman Miles right here. I'd like to read a little bit about that if I can, uh, uh, if I can get to it. Well, this is all encirclement and suppression, counter campaigns against encirclement and oppression. If we were to look at the very beginning, we would see the outline, and this talks about uh, encirclement of suppression, counter campaigns against encirclement of oppression. Our strategy and tactics emerging from these characteristics. So this is up here talking about uh, characteristics of the Chinese. Revolutionary War. Up here it talks about problems of strategy in China's Revolutionary War. How to study war. The war, the laws of war are developmental. Strategy is a study of the laws of war and war situation as a whole. The important thing is to be good at learning. One of the things that China came up with, that it was clear, said China is a big country that's weak. And Japan is a small country, but strong. So China had to, when I say China, I mean the Communist Chinese, the anti-Japanese front, the Chinese Communists and Chiang Kai-shek, which they were both enemies, but they had to have a united front against the Japanese invasion. So they both had cooperated a little bit in fighting the Japanese. Now remember, they both realized that we're a big country, a lot of people, but we're weak in weapons, and structure, organization, everything. So they have to use their size to benefit themselves. So a lot of their strategy came from what Chairman Mao calls strategic retreat. 
Strategic retreat is drawing the enemy in deep. Strategic retreat means not confronting the enemy head on because he's too powerful, too well organized. So you use, and Chairman Mao says that each group of people have to use strategies and tactics. They study the laws of war in general, but then you see he says study the war, uh, the Chinese Civil War in particular. And it goes on to elaborate, every people have to study the laws of war in general, the regular law of war. But they also have to study the rules, regulation, guidelines, environmental circumstances of their own war. And this is how Chairman Mao became the head of the Communist Party. I don't want to go into it, but the Russians was running things a little bit since they had for Communist Revolution, and they said, well, we, this is what we think you are. Chairman Mao said no. They tried to follow what the Russians said. See, China said, Chairman Mao said, Russia had an industrial revolution. We Chinese are having a peasant revolution. It's different. Okay. So strategic retreat is if you're fighting your enemy, you keep pulling back and pulling back to draw him into a trap. Khalid Wali, Khalid in the Wali was very good at this. Drawing the enemy in deep. Breaking the ranks of the enemy, turning and running. And while they're running way up ahead, they're fanning them around, because you can't see that far ahead. They two, three miles up there. They booking they they're running and they're forming two columns. One is running out that way. One is running way around that way. Guess what happened? Pretty soon, you've got them running after you and they are surrounded by who? You. Strategic retreat. We use strategic retreat in Oakland so well, it's unbelievable. And that's what we're talking about now. Because see, remember our goal has always been the public might have thought, and we might have even thought ourselves, that our mission is to, to build a great big organization and many massages and schools and da 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 and show people what could be done. But we also know about leaderless resistance. We also knew that everywhere we established a place, we were infiltrated all the way up to the top. And if I wasn't there personally, that that place, wherever it was, was under the charge of Adu, the enemies of this now. This is, this is just the laws of that we knew. We knew that from uh, what we've been dealing with. And I'll read an article that relates to that. So, The laws of war for us meant that we had to use superior tactics. Chairman Mao has writings on guerrilla warfare. We changed from guerrilla warfare to psychological guerrilla warfare. Islamic Institute for Counter Designs of America, psychological warfare. Sounds pretty fancy there for colored people. It don't not only sound fancy, it's the fanciest action ever taken in America, probably in the world. What is that? Use the, take the enemy, have him use his own weapons against himself. And we knew how he would respond to certain things. 
Look at the National Negro. The National Negro said 30 years ago, Judaism is a gutter religion. So they moved on the National Negro so much, the Zionist press to the Negro was saying, I have never faced so much challenges in my life. He went and got it pulled out of his violin. Remember that? You ain't never seen us with no violin. Right? So, you can't read it. Psych out Zionist Americanism. We have to psych them out. So we know if we say certain things, they're going to respond. That's why during the 2007, 8, 9, 10, all those articles in the newspaper, remember the press would come here all the time. The Japanese press, the German press, everybody. You could see them back there, white folks, Dutch Wella, with cameras in those days. In those days, 10 years ago. They were going to use their media. That's what I'd be going up to New York to uh, Hannity and all of that. You notice wherever I went, I only got to go there one time. They ain't never, no matter, even in Atlanta, they came here from Atlanta, and they got the highest ratings they've ever gotten. But they don't ever come get you anymore. Why? Because psychological guerrilla warfare. The white folks, the Zionists was coming up with Islamic enclaves, if you remember that, Islamic enclaves. That means we, we're telling everybody what we're going to do. Masjid, school, businesses, geographical integrity, living close together, nothing secret, nothing, 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 nothing. They came out to try to destroy that in their press. That's what they wanted, that's what we wanted them to do. Pretty soon, they went even further. So, the further they went, the better. So we said, we really got a hook now. So we opened up the Islamic Institute for Counter-Zionist American Psychological Warfare. How much work did we do? There's a lot of work. Put a computer in there for the school and open that. Well, we'd already had the place over here. We just had a couple of dinners over there, remember? Oh, but you ought to see what they wrote. And they internet and everything else. They terrorist watch list. Steve Emerson, the other old Zionist. Uh, Daniel Pipes. Daniel Pipes, all of them. Right? They wrote the stuff in all of there and put it in all of their things to destroy us. Did they destroy us? Absolutely not. They gave us more and more credibility. Why? Because they're putting us on the stage and we don't act like what we are. They're putting us on stage. So we're going to act like what we are. No, this is what we do. You don't run nothing. And all of a sudden, we have to tell them what we're doing. They send, can you imagine in East Oakland, they send their people, regular Zionist looking people to the program. It's not been five people there, a couple of Arabs, a couple of Negroes. And that's it. Or when it hits the paper, the Zionist paper. Everything. In other words, this is the greatest uh, guerrilla warfare ever done. Why? We said it a hundred times. You engineer the environmental circumstances where the enemy uses its own weapons against itself. And it causes you no harm whatsoever. It don't cost you nothing. Right? That's how we've treated those people. And everything we did, 
was according to them, Strategic Retreat 2008. What is an example of Strategic Retreat? 2013, 14, 15, 16, and up to now. The pawns are attacking us. Let's say we were just playing chess, we would be a king or a queen or something, right? So it, it would be an insult to send a pawn, the garbage man, right? The garbage man or whatever. To insult you, right? To provoke you to react According to what, remember, they're a super organization. They got everything set up. All the people that was in Oakland is on their team. All the people that's here, they're on their team. The Iranians here, not the good Iranians, on their team. The Negroes. Groups, movements are on their team. The phony Panthers and open everybody is on their team because remember, in the warfare that we're dealing with, all of the original revolutionaries are dead, gone, and prison and finished. So for the last 40 years, you have only seen semblances of revolution. Leaderless resistance. If the white people know it, you know how long we've been doing it. Leaderless resistance says you cannot develop in America a pyramid type structure organization. You can't do it. That's what white folks say. And they're always 15, 20 years behind us. <laughs> right? Now, suppose we didn't already try it, say, 40 years ago, that we tried it. Uh, up to 20 years ago. We get the idea, that ain't gonna work. That is not going to work. And you get that easy 30 years ago. That ain't gonna work. But you still have to divert them. You still have to draw them in deep. Okay, so what did we do? We drew them in deep. That's what happened in Oakland four, five, four, three, four years ago, three years ago. Ever since uh, we engineered the attack on us, what is the attack? If you take, let's say, the highest in a hierarchy and you take the lowest end, they feel that uh, these people have a certain amount of, mm, not arrogance, but they have a healthy self-esteem. And if you attack that, and if you don't have nothing to go on, if there ain't no skeletons in their closet, don't make no difference. You just say anything you want. Why? Because everybody listening is on their team, right? Now, what, if you've been knowing that for 20 years, strategic retreat means that you have to use in psychological guerrilla warfare, strategic management under conditions of repression. All that means is you are a small group or individual fighting an international conglomerate with all the facilities in his hand. Therefore, you have to use everything that you have. So, diversions, delays, all of that is on your side. Now, why do they think, are they certain that we provoke these people, we can get them to fall into our orbit. 
They have me back to middle is a perfect example. All this stuff is set up. They arranged it today. They arranged all of that. But they got him to play in their game. Mm. He knew it the first time. No matter what happened, if they sent people down in 96 to mess around with dope in their neighborhood, that's them sending them. So they will have to respond. How many times they try here? 40 or 50, I don't even have people on the hill. They have the little boy, 17 years old, his mama is hanging around with Sister Bahia. The boy is hanging around with my grandson. And the boy, 17, goes up and starts fighting the Negroes on the hill. Why? If we get in a fight with them, our mission is diverted. Now, they got all the parolees and all the niggas and the mixtures of bullies and everybody that they can flood in here on us and they will send us aid and assistance and people with guns, like the people who want to fight. Remember, they're not here anymore. But we had a meeting, I said, do y'all think we should uh, saw and so and that? Just around the corner. They had pistols on them, is what we wanted to do. I said, well, we didn't think about it. I meant absolutely not. It ain't no way in the world I'm going to have somebody come in and start a fight for me to get in. Well, you can't start no fight for me. I can start my own fight, but you can't. I don't care what it's about. Right? Hmm. That happened, I don't know how many times. But when Imam Jamil had worked with the Negroes selling dope and all of that, and saying that he was shot and all that, okay, that's getting him into their orbit. Okay. So they give him a phony case and then they, the police is going to come. The police officer said, well, we didn't even know who Imam Jamil was. This is African American. As if, and the dumb jury, you gotta remember, the jury is dumb. And you're playing in their ball court, it don't make no difference. You're playing in their court, you're playing in their system. So, here come Mukhtar. Challenges, lies, provocations to provoke, right, me, the king on a chessboard, into fighting with a pawn, right, and acting convinced and, and saying anything you want. And, and all of the people there are evidently on their team. Again, strategic retreat. Even up to, we did three or four strategic retreats. When Miss Khadija called me, maybe it was earlier this year, might have been way up in January or something. I said, goodbye, Bowman. You want it? Keep it. Does it mean we're scared of them? No, if the police get out of line, you can see the way we talk to the police. When the police was messing with somebody down there, it ain't no Negroes that I've seen in America that walk up and grab two polices. And PG polices, that's 20 years ago, 15 years, when they were shooting, they had just shot four Negroes, the white ponies right across the street. They were wiping out Negroes. And here is you grabbing. How many police have, uh, Abdul Malik them grabbed. How many police have Mukhtar them grabbed? They talk in revolutionary talk. How many times have they been arrested? How many times have they ever had any challenge from the system at all? Right? How many times have they been invited to the student groups and all of that? How many times have I been invited? 
the one that's known worldwide, right? Remember the last month or so when we showed the thing a few times from Dr. Clem Siddiqui? What happened? They took it off. They took everything down. Are we being paid attention to? Absolutely. Who's paying attention to us? Everybody. Whose ear do we have? Everyone's. How did it happen? <clears throat> we arranged it. We are a certain type of people with certain characteristics and they are a big group, well organized, well oiled, right? Therefore, we have to use strategic leverage. Strategic leverage is uh, that no matter how small you are, if you can get enough leverage, you can move the earth almost, that's what the, they said, the mathematical. So you can get enough leverage, you get a pole long enough, you can put the earth on it, you just say, and push down on it, and you go over here and move the earth. Of course, they just use it as a, but it's basically true. If you can put a ton and you can have a mile long pole, man, you can push it over here and move a ton. It don't have to be a mile, it should just be a half a block, maybe. But you got the leverage. Okay, here's the point. So, Everything that we have now has been arranged. The main reason that it's been arranged is because the Islamic movement and the global liberation movement at this time as is at the stage where the movement needs to be taught certain things. And they're the same thing basically from self-image psychology. When the people of Pharaoh had been so used to working for Pharaoh, they couldn't think of working for themselves. And they could not think of Pharaoh being defeated, right? So what do we have to do? We have defeated the system time after time after time. We have showed them to be basic imbeciles on everything that's big. Y'all yeah, remember this was a lot, this was the one called Bashir, Bashir, good news. Lebanon, 2006, remember that? When they were, oh, it's terrible, they're going to destroy it, what? Not, not here, we got the day, 7-14-2006. 721 2006, 728, one week after another. You say this invasion is good.